This is a DC motor that's being powered by a 9 volt battery. And in this video, we are going to give you a material explanation for how this motor works. Welcome to Material Atomics. My name's Anastasia. I'm Michael Shiloh. And on this channel, we give you material explanations for atomic phenomena. Over the course of the last few videos, we've introduced the concept of this electric circuit that has a DC power source and it has a single atom thick wire that we've used to illustrate the concept of electricity. And we've illustrated electricity as this rotational, involuting motion of the electron shell of the atom. But you still have to ask yourself, where exactly is the current that is inside of the circuit coming from? We've defined voltage as the difference in momentum between the terminals, but how do you wind it up? And what we're going to do is we're going to use this little DC motor that we have to explain the way that motion on a macro scale creates motion on this micro scale. And then after we're done with it, we'll be able to use what we figured out from the DC motor to explain how a similar DC generator could power the circuit that we've been talking about in all of these other videos. And at the end, if we've done a really good job, we'll also be able to explain an AC motor and an AC generator. So let's get to it. All right, so let's take a look at our DC motor here. There's a couple of really critical pieces that we need to be aware of. These are static magnets, which we'll discuss in a separate video. But needless to say, they have a north pole and a south pole, and they're fixed. They're always going to have the north over here and the south over here on this side. Now, in between them, we have this coil of wire. And the coil of wire is fed into a positive and negative lead at either side. Well, they're opposite polarity leads, and you can see this one. If I turn it, there's a wire running down the back here. And then on the other side, there is another, the opposite uh, polarity contact there. So what happens is when this coil is at a particular angle like this, at about a 45 degree angle, it makes contact with these terminals here. And these terminals go off and they connect to whatever we connect them to, in this case to our battery. The geometry is set like this, at an, the coil is at an angle, we have a continuous circuit running all the way down through this coil and around to the two terminals of our battery. And so you get a current in the coils only when it's at this 45 degree angle away from the axis of the magnets that are fixed. That's right, exactly. Is that important? Yeah, it's important. So what happens is when you have a current carrying wire and you loop it around like this, we've done with these coils, you create a solenoid, which is a basic electromagnet. In other words, as long as there's current in the wire, you can generate a magnet inside of this coil system, which I've illustrated here. In this case, it has a south pole over here and a north pole over here. So you take a wire and you coil it around this tube. And you connect the leads coming out from either end of your solenoid to the battery. And so what you've created is you've, you've created a continuous coil of wire that is now an electromagnet that has a fixed north and south pole. What's really interesting, though, about this coil is that the magnet only appears when there's current in the wire. That means when the coil is turned like this and it's not making contact, there's no magnet. Mm. The magnet is a transient magnet. It only appears when there's current, which is only at this point where both of these leads are touching the two pillars here. And that's because you need it to just be there to give it the kick to, to, to move it. So it's like it's exactly. at a 45 degree angle because if it was directly when it was in line with the fixed magnet, it would just get stuck there. Exactly. And so it's, at, it's, it's designed to be at a 45 degree angle so that when the current is on, it's away from the axis and then it kicks it. And you've, and you've So let's see that kick really quick. So it's, there's no magnet in the coil right now. If I turn it to that point, ooh, it kicks. Mm. You do see it that? Again. Let me see that let's again. Do it again. And then actually, again, it makes contact at 180 degrees here as well. It goes into that configuration and ooh, it kicks. Mm. It goes in and ooh, it kicks. It's interesting. It kicks more one way than well, the other it's, way. It's not a, uh, <laughs> a finely tuned German machine. Ooh, kicks. Kicks. Oh, we kind of weak kick on that side. Kick. Okay. 
So what's happening, and the reason it's kicking, is because the south pole that appears during that conductive moment ooh, has an opposite motion of its electron shells from the magnet that's static here. Two south poles facing one another means that the atoms in this magnet are all pushing this way, as I've drawn with this arrow here. They're all pushing along the sides this way. And these ones are also pushing that way towards the south pole. All the shells here along the coil are all aligned and they're pushing that way, at least all of the valence shells that are important. The electromagnet is designed in such a way that when the circuit closes, you always get a south pole that's facing the south pole of the fixed magnet, and you always get a north pole that's fixing the north pole. Every time that you close the circuit, you're going to get the exact same push. And so it doesn't matter where this electromagnetic coil is, every single time you are rotating it to close the circuit, and you're getting this kick because the South Pole and the North Pole suddenly align and they get pushed away because we know that that's what happens in a magnet. The rotation of the shells of the South Pole meet the rotation of the shells of the induced electromagnet and they push away from each other and that's why you get this kick. And because of the, the geometry of the shaft and the way that the wires are running along the shaft, when you get a strong enough kick, you have enough momentum as it travels around that it continuously is forcing itself towards the next turn, and so it keeps turning and turning and turning and turning and turning. Yeah, so just to be clear, this is easily conceived as a generator as well. All we'd have to do is turn this crankshaft ourselves like this or hook up an army of rats to it on a hamster wheel and turn this ourselves and by doing that, we're going to run a current into the circuit. What's interesting here is when you put the coil facing a magnet, the coil's facing a magnet, the magnet actually induces the same orientation of the shells in it as the magnet. Because you have a rotational motion of the shells that are here inside of the magnet, when it's static, you're inducing a specific rotation in this magnet. But when you're flipping it, you're forcing a different kind of rotation in that same coil. Here, we have in the south pole is over here. The south pole is inducing a north pole, actually, in this magnet, just naturally like this, right? But... If this north pole comes over to here, where it's now facing this north pole on the static magnet, this has been turned into a north by being over here. When it faces the static magnet's uh, north pole, it's going to be turned into a south pole all of a sudden. That means all of the atoms have to flip. Their shells are now aligned in the opposite direction that they used to be, which is a very interesting motion. And I've there's a couple of ways that we can conceive of that happening atomically, and I'm going to put some animations in here to show that. Obviously, one option is that the atoms simply spin on their heels and go the opposite direction. But another option would be that they just do this sort of involution motion, and they sort of rotate around. But at any rate, what you're doing is you're reversing the polarity of the rotation of the shells in these atoms as it moves through its rotation. And what that has the effect of doing is, in this case, we spin the atoms in one direction, and that is going down the leads and spinning the, the atoms in this direction over here at this lead, let's say right-handed over here. Now, when they reach the other side, they're going to spin left-handed all of a sudden when they hit this magnet, which is perfect because that wire is hooked up to the opposite lead now. And of course, we would expect right-handed and left-handed to be the case in a continuous circuit that's combined. Because and is this AC or DC? This is DC, which is, which is startling because what, we've, what we're doing by the, through the geometry of this is every, even though the current is alternating inside of the coil, each time the lead is making appropriate contact with the opposite terminal, right? So even though the spin is flipped here, once it flips over here, it's meeting a new terminal, right? It's meeting the positive as opposed to meeting the negative each time. This is what I really wanted to get across. So all you would do if you wanted to make this an AC generator, an AC motor, is you would have to maintain contact with the leads at all times. 
And there's special brush and loop systems, which I can show a picture of here, that allow you to make continual contact with the leads. And if you did that, then of course this one's, as the spin flips in these atoms over and over again, over here, the, the polarity of these atoms changes, then you're just going to have opposite polarity phases in the wire, which is an AC circuit. So that's the basics of it. Now, the important thing is that this can easily be conceived of as a generator too, if we simply get a legion of rats to turn this for us, right? So by turning this with the rats, we can charge up our battery because each time that it turns, we're ma making sure that those atoms are going through their difficult um, polarity changes so that all the atoms are being reoriented each time and that little kick that goes into reorienting them drives the twist of the circuit all the way down the leads in each case. The physical orientation of the fixed magnet relative to the coil of wire is affecting the atoms inside of that wire and as the atoms are affected because they're physically connected as part of the wire, they're affecting the other ones that are next to them, and the rotation of the atoms is what gives you this transient electromagnet inside of a DC motor or a DC generator. And that flipping of the pole of the magnet relative to the fixed magnets as it rotates is what's giving you the ability to create motive force. Yeah, I mean, the motive force ultimately comes down to turning the crankshaft in a generator. You have to put some muscle into it. But by doing that, what you're really doing is you're forcing those atomic shells, the motion of the fiber in the atomic shells to change directions relative to the shaft or the coil. I mean, you're basically using the, the, the induction of a transient electric field inside of the coil by the fixed magnets, right? So if you're in a magnetic field and you're moving a coil of wire, you're going to get this transient electric current inside of it. And the transient electric current is, is actually a material thing that's happening to the atoms. It's not some magical, you know, it's, it's, it's not a magic event. No, it's just physical contact between the extended shells of the fixed stator's atoms and the coil's atoms. And what's really beautiful about this design is that even though the, there's an alternating current in the coil system, technically, it's going just from one polarity in the coils to the other polarity in the coils, the fact that the contacts change between the positive and the negative at each 180 degrees allows it to just be directional because every single time... The, regardless of this having its polarity flipped, it's now facing a flipped polarity lead each time. And so the circuit remains continuous and you can drive a DC current in this circuit here. So what's next? Quantum? Yeah, I think what comes next on this channel is we'll take a break from electromagnetism and we will start to investigate some different spooky atomic phenomena. We've been growing a list from suggestions at our Discord page and from guests that we've talked to. We also have a conversation coming up with Jeff Yi, who has an architectural idea about the organization of the nucleus. And we haven't talked much about the nucleus yet, so we're going to crack that open. So yeah, a lot of cool stuff coming up. And of course, we want to hear your suggestions for future videos. Yeah, make sure you tell us if the explanation makes sense or not. This channel is basically the place where we are playing with these explanations out loud for the first time. And so if we've finished the explanation and you're still sitting there scratching your head, we need to know because we need to be able to make a better explanation so that it makes sense. And so if there's anything that's confusing or you feel like we haven't really fully explained, make sure you tell us and we will fix it. We will make another video and we will continuously keep improving the quality of these because as we go, we realize what works, what doesn't, and what needs improvement. This is probably the, not the last time we will be making a video about DC generators, but it is our first video. So I hope you liked it and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.